Emily, how can we help? Thanks for taking my call. You bet. How can we help today, Emily? Hi, I'm trying to uh, get prepared for college savings. I have a three-year-old and a kid on the way. And uh, my husband and I both went to very expensive schools and kind of looking at the 6% growth and tuition year over year, Mm -hmm. the total amount to save is very high. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm curious if, you know, I'd love for my kids to have scholarships and everything, but I want to be prepared for a worst case scenario. (laughs) And I'm curious if there's any scenario where you'd recommend putting some of that savings in something other than a 529. Mm. What do you mean by other than? Where else would you put it? Are you considering? I guess I'm just, if, um, you know, one of my kids ends up going to an in-state school or get a scholarship, then I won't need hopefully all that money. And I'm curious if there's any benefit or recommendations for not getting that um, 10%. Well, um, even if you get a scholarship, okay. what's really cool about these plans is you can withdraw against that scholarship. So if there, let's say there's a $20,000 scholarship and you go, well, now I didn't need this money. Well, you can withdraw 20000 from that savings account tax-free. Okay. And so that doesn't need to be a concern. And there's broad application okay. into how you can use those funds when we talk about learning and education. It's very Room broad. Room and board, the laptops, the books, there's so much regardless of where those they go towards to school. Trade schools, certifications. Uh, certifications, you know, you talk about online, you know, technology programs like Bethel Tech, which I endorse. I mean, you, th- listen, th- they can go a lot of different ways. It's not like you're trapped. Is that what you're feeling? Okay. I'm just, it seems like a lot of money to sit in a 529, so I wasn't sure if it. Well, how much money are you talking? Put something. Well, like, where I went to school, if I was projecting that for my daughter, it'd be just shy of 800K when she's. What? Okay. Her, Holy. Oh, yeah, sorry, it's I'm, crazy. I, I'm a little short of breath. Why does she need to go there? 800. Why does 000? anyone need to go there? Where is she going? It's just, it's like a top tier school. I, I mean, I don't know if she will, but I would right. love to be able to provide Please for tell, her okay, did. how much did you pay for it? Because I'm now, I'm very curious. Yeah. Well, I had need-based scholarships, but the full rate when I went to school was about 40K a year. Okay. That sounds a lot more reasonable compared to 800K for four years. Yeah, and today's rate is like 80K. Okay, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? I really, and I'm okay if it's different than than what I think, but I'm curious to know. You said you and your husband both went to very expensive schools. Yeah. Do you think that those schools were worth the tuition based on where you guys are now? And maybe where you could have gone to school? I believe so. I mean, my husband got a full, he he did ROTC, so he did, he got a full scholarship, so he didn't end up paying. But um, I believe it was worth it if if my daughter wanted to go. But I you would, didn't. But neither sounds like neither one of you paid full tuition or anything close. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, I I I just want to challenge you on name brand schools. Um, mm-hmm. uh, let, let let me put it this way. Uh, you remember the last time you went to the doctor? I mean, you're getting ready to have a baby. So you remember your last checkup? Yeah. Yeah. At any point in your medical journey, when you were getting baby checkups or your own personal health, have you ever asked your doctor to uh, bring their diploma in and show you their diploma? (laughs) No. Why? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So how in the world would you trust the life of your baby with this doctor who you don't even know where he went to med school and undergrad? Right. All right. You get where I'm going here? Mm-hmm. I'm not anti-education, Emily. But I'm telling you, nobody cares. Nobody cares where you went to school. Uh, education important for the qualification you need? Yes. Notice I said for the qualification that you need. And your kids, the, the, the landscape of education is changing so rapidly that by the time your kids are there, um, the 529 is the safest play. Just to give you an idea right now, okay? So enrollment is down tremendously. 
ten percent. I mean, uh, uh, I just put this out there. I got to look it up. Uh, but enrollment is down so much right now in the United States, and and it's Gen Z. So this is the generation right now that's in high school, and they're looking at this stuff. And just to give you the numbers, college enrollment is down nearly ten percent over the last two years. Only 51% of Gen Z teens are considering a four-year degree. That's a 20-point drop since May of 2020. The point is there's a lot of education options that aren't going to look like they look right now. And so I think the 529, George, the point I'm making is whether I'm right or wrong and what I predict, it gives her flexibility. Oh, yeah. And one other thing, Emily, if you put that money elsewhere, it's going to have a tax burden on it. And so if you put right. it in the 529, it goes in tax-free, grows tax-free. You can withdraw it tax-free. You can also change the beneficiary, and it's very loose. This could be spouse. This could be in-laws. It could be children, including stepchildren, foster children, siblings, step-siblings, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, first cousins. So the options are endless. This money is not going to go to waste. And I assume you guys have an amazing household income. Can you tell me what it is? I think it's around 500k. There we go. And so here's the thing: by the time they're 16, 17, they start applying to colleges. Yeah. You guys could ca- could cash flow this as well. Yeah. Right. Very easily. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. By the time they're going I'm, to college, you're going to be completely debt free, including the house. Right. If you're not already. Right. And right. so at that point, making 500000 this is a rhetorical question, by the way, could you cash flow college? The entire audience listening is screaming, yes. Trust me, you can. Right. You couldn't cash flow eighty k a year making 500000 uh, No, I could. Yeah, definitely. I there could we go. 80K. So I still would do I the 529. Know, I don't know what that will look like. Because on the road. Stra- strategically, it's a smart yeah. move to invest with that kind of tax advantage. And you can always change the beneficiary. You can withdraw against the scholarship. There's so many options there. And then a worst case scenario, when you can withdraw it, it's going to create you know income tax and there's a 10% penalty. But that is a worse, worse, worst case scenario. And there's a lot of things you can do with that money. In the yeah, meantime. and then there's the fact that your kid may show up one day at 16, 17 and go, hey, I want to do this. I know I want to do this. And this is how I can go do this. And it has nothing to do with a four-year degree and the fancy college that you went to that you'd like your kid to go to. Parents, we got to wake up. And sometimes those fancy colleges are more about our desires than their desires. Whoa, there it is, Ken. Well, it is. Just dropped it's a, a bomb hey, right there. Uh, okay, now I'm fired up. Here's one more for you. College degrees have become more about status than actual success. And that's the reality. And uh, the landscape is changing. So I say all that to say investing in a 529 for relevant education is the way to go, George. You laid it Preach. out beautifully. Preach it. And my goodness, everybody but the household dog is uh, eligible it's amazing. for benefits. Fido might be on there. Who knows? Yeah, we'll dig into that on the commercial dog break. Dog college is the future. Oh, boy.